You were looking here at advanced squamous cell carcinoma of the head and neck. What was the context and what were you trying to do? What was the challenge? These were recurrent metastatic disease patients with head and neck squamous cell tumors. They were heavily pretreated. Uh, about 60% of patients had two or more lines of therapy, so a very poor prognosis population. Generally, we think of uh, a median survival for this population of six or less months. Now, you've been trying an, an anti-PD-1, a PD-1 targeted therapy. Um, if they didn't get that, what's the standard treatment they might have got? Not too many options, I suppose. Yeah, our options are limited. We have chemotherapy. Um, usually in the first line setting for recurrent metastatic disease, we use doublet chemotherapy with a platinum, either with 5-FU or with a taxane. Um, sometimes we add cetux cetuximab onto that, as that's the only targeted therapy. Cetuximab by itself has a moderate or small response rate of 13, 10 to 13 percent. In the second line setting, um, we may uh, use a methotrexate or a taxane, and that's really it. We have chemotherapy and we have cetuximab, and so the options are limited. So could you describe what you did here in this study? So in this study, we used uh, pembrolizumab, uh, a new therapy, an anti-PD-1 antibody, um, in patients that are heavily pretreated with recurrent metastatic head and neck cancer. Uh, the dose, uh, the, uh, it was given as an infusion every three weeks at a flat dose of 200 milligrams, given every three weeks. Uh, what happened? Well, the exciting thing about uh, the treatment was that it actually worked quite well. One in four patients had a response. Uh, meaning substantial shrinkage. An additional 25% um, had stable disease. And if you just look at any level of tumor shrinkage, so a very soft cutoff of benefit, uh, even f more, 57% of patients had some level of tumor shrinkage. Sounds pretty amazing. What did you make of it? Yeah, I, I think these are remarkable data, something that we've actually not seen before. If you compare this with cetuximab, the best targeted therapy we have right now, uh, cetuximab has a response rate of 10 to 13 percent. This is twice as good. It has double the response rate. What was the PD-1-directed agent doing to these patients? So it seems like cancer in general, and head neck cancer in particular, uh, these cancers have found a way to escape the immune system, and the immune system can uh, fight the cancer. What pembrolizumab or PD-1 inhibitors do is they make the cancer visible again uh, to the immune system. So rather than treating the cancer directly, we're empowering the immune system to fight the cancer. And so what you sometimes see early on is that these cancers become inflamed um, and they get infiltrated with these immune cells and the immune cells actually do the job. And sometimes I compare this to like lighting a fire and that fire keeps burning. Um, and because it's not directly uh, a treatment for the cancer, but an indirect treatment, the side effects are also oftentimes um, much less. Other agents? There's another PD-1 agent called nivolumab that's being developed for head and neck cancer, and there's a PD-L1 agent um, called Medi-4736 that's being developed for head and neck cancer. There are additional agents in development, although I'm not aware of uh, head and neck specific trials right now. Some of the standard therapies for this group of patients are quite toxic. What about these new agents? Chemotherapy is toxic, radiation is toxic, uh, cetuximab is better tolerated, but these agents are remarkable because they have a very mild side effect profile. The biggest side effect, or the most common side effect, um, was actually mild fatigue, grade 1 or grade 2. Generally speaking, compared to what we currently use, these are very well tolerated agents. Rarely there are more severe side effects, we have to watch out for those, but that's just really just one or two cases in our 132 patient uh, cohort, which is a very substantial cohort. Some of your patients would have had HPV involvement and others not. Did that make a difference? Well, it's a great question. About 60% of the patients were HPV negative, 40% uh, were HPV positive, so you had a nice balance. It was active in both subgroups. Uh, that's again, I think, remarkable because there's now data suggesting that cetuximab, another therapy for EGFR, doesn't work so well in HPV positive. So this seems to work in both entities. And you got responses. Did you, were these durable responses? 
That's the other really exciting thing about uh, pembrolizumab in head and neck cancer is 86% of patients who responded continue to be in response. So it seems like we have durable responses, something that we don't typically see with chemotherapy or with target therapies. Of course, predicting the outcome of PD-1 therapy is an interesting thing. And you've got a genetic marker, haven't you? That is correct. So there, there are two things that I think right now may help us identify those patients that benefit. What has been widely studied is PDL1, uh, immunistic chemistry, and that does a reasonably good job. But the new thing that we are showing here to, uh, at this meeting is that there is also a gene expression signature that seems to be, at least in these early data, exceptionally good at predicting which patients should not receive the treatment and is still quite good at predicting who should get it. So I think if this is validated, this might really help us identify the right patients. And that feature is? It's called an interferon gamma signature. There's a very likely a big role for immunotherapy with PD-1 and like pembrolizumab in head and neck cancer. I think we have to await more mature data. We have to await survival data. My expectation is that they likely will have a significant impact on survival. So I think very likely oncologists will in the future be able to hang their head on this uh, type of therapy. I think uh, right now it's important to shunt people to clinical trials to really obtain mature data and do it safely. Sure, other PD-1 agents? There are, is another PD-1 agent that's being developed in head and neck cancer, that's nivolumab, uh, that's also being tested in head and neck cancer. So promising. What do you think are the clinical implications of some of these developments? Um, in, for head and neck cancer, I think it provides a lot of hope. Uh, I think um, right now, I think it's very reasonable to refer patients uh, for immunotherapy trials because I think there is a signal that these agents might really help patients. Um, I also think the larger context is that uh, very likely we'll see a change in how we treat cancer and you know we're starting obviously with a very worst patient population patients who are heavily pretreated but I foresee that there's a good chance that this will move to uh, frontline or even the curative net setting I think it will change head and neck cancer treatment and I think even broader it will change many cancer types so in just a few words what should doctors take home from this pembrolizumab is active in head and neck cancer one in four patient response um, and the side effect profile is very tolerable.